Welcome to Focus Gaming News. This is the media booth and I'm so excited to welcome David Yartom, who is the general counsel and gaming industry expert at Soft2Bet. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I've just been down to Soft2Bet to what most people consider themselves to have a stand at Sigma. Yours is more like its own villa. You have a massive presence here. Yeah. Yes, yes, I agree. I think we, uh, uh, we took a very large stand. Um, I think it's, uh, it's shown off, to, it's proven to be very, yeah. very good for us, for a lot of people. I'm going to argue again, it is not a stand. A stand is a small thing. This is like a village of its own. So really huge congratulations for that. Thank you. So David, listen, I want to first of all say a massive congratulations because you guys at soft bet have just attained a license for Italy, uh, which is really significant, obviously, to your business model and what soft bet is trying to achieve. So tell me more about that. Why is it so important? And how does that reflect on everything that you're in planning and putting it in plan for the next coming year. Yeah, so first of all, I'm, I'm very proud about this license. Uh, this was, a, this was a all done internally. Uh, it was a little bit different from all other licenses that uh, we've uh, opted to, we required this last year. This was done, uh, this was run through an acquisition, all through the internal legal and compliance department. It was a very nice achievement. And Italy sits with our regulatory goal. We're trying to expand this man to many licenses and many regulations that we can. Uh, the past 12 months, we've obtained licenses in Sweden, in Greece, in Romania, um, and we're having license application open in, in Germany and in Portugal. Uh, Irish license that is also been renewed. I think that in Softubet, I've made uh, the, 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 the largest amount of licenses in the shortest amount of time, and there's more and more and more. Um, US is up uh, in um, next year, so. We're expanding and we're, we're well, loving see, it. You see, now I need to ask you about this because you've just mentioned a whole bunch of European countries and there's a real buzzword at the moment around Sigma Europe 2023. I've heard so much about LATAM, about Brazil. There's been talk about Peru and Ecuador and Chile. There's been a lot of talk about Asia. And unlike every other uh, Sigma that I've been to, I think, I haven't heard a lot of people talking about Europe or about the US. Now, six months ago, everyone was talking about the US, breaking the US market. So why, first of all, you've mentioned the US, so I need to grill you on that. But why focus on Europe when everybody else is looking at South America, for instance? Well, South America is not a market that we don't look into. We definitely look into that market as well. But I think that what we bring to the European market is different. That's why we see a lot of profit from Europe, a lot of prospect, uh, prospects from Europe itself. So most websites that you go into and you look at, they're very generic. Um, they don't have a different variety between one of them. Of course, the look and feel might, uh, might, might vary from one, from one to the other, but we bring something a little bit more different. We bring our gamification experience and it has worked magic in regulated market as well. So that's what we feel that we reintroduce this to the European market. It's not like we're just approaching the European market. We're bringing them in the European market with something that is completely new. Um, and we see it successful now once we exhaust the European market, which we choose specifically where to go to. We don't go to all Europe. Then we will definitely expand. The U.S. is one of those uh, one of those examples. And for sure, South America is, is always there. We're looking after it and even Africa. We don't stop in Europe. So it's interesting that you mentioned about the US versus the, the European markets. And again, I'm still going to keep grilling you on this one, David, because if you look at the US, while there are some cultural differences from north to south, generally speaking, first of all, you have the same language. Second of all, cultural backgrounds are, are generally the same. Whereas, my goodness, you're looking at Europe. Europe not only has language different differentiations, but it also has cultural differentiations. So how does that reflect back into what you, you mean, you, you, rightly so, you've just said we've, uh, we've achieved these licenses right across Europe and it's doing really well, but is that as much of a headache as it is an opportunity? Oh, it's definitely a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, you know, every market has its own challenges. I mean, you correctly said it, every market is a different culture. We heavily investigate those markets before we go into them. Uh, we appoint the relevant people who understand the markets. So I'm not taking just the general manager 
um, it does marketing and try to figure out how we make money them. No, we take the people who work there, who know the industry, who knows how to attract more people, and we rely on them in order to bring to to basically generate revenues from these territories. Because otherwise, it won't work. I mean, I can't one 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 system fits all doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so you need to be very accurate. Um, you need to be very precise. You need to be efficient. And you need to pick and choose, right? Because some people like, and I'm going to take you to the U.S. for example right now, because in the U.S. the tendency was for other operators, existing operators, and I know because I was there, was to expand as much as possible. And then you saw huge operators, Win, for example, or 888, but expanded to many, many, many territories. Um, and then the expenditure was very great. And it's varied from one to another. And eventually it leads to a downfall. When we go to the U.S. right now, we're focusing on New Jersey. We don't go to the entirety of the U.S., but we have a, we have a, we have a goal there, right? We really want to showcase our product to the U.S. market. So it's not only penetrating the market, it's penetrating the market with a, with a strategy. Um, we haven't spoken about it, but, but Softimate is a B2C and a B2B. So our product is showcases our capability to other operators. And that's what also, also something that we rely on in all of the territories that we go into. And I hear when people talk about the U.S., New Jersey an awful lot. I was just recently in New Jersey, and there is a kind of a different culture in New, in New Jersey with regards to, to online gaming and, and, and gambling in general. There's a whole different culture to that. So are there, is it significant, the differences state to state? Obviously, there is with regards to regulation, which must just be an incredible headache. But is there, are you, do you still find there are cultural differences and acceptance? We always think of Las Vegas as being, you know, the, the place where gaming should be a success just because of the, the culture there. Yeah, I, I, I can't testify too much about the differences, but there, there must be. There must be. There's, there, it's a big, it, the U.S. is a big state. Um, and you see variances between one state and the Europe where are much closer to, to states in the U.S. Uh, uh, this preference in terms of uh, how to place bets, like somebody would like more to place the focus on sports betting, others would place more focus on casino. Not a lot of states offer casino right now, so there's got to be a difference there between, yeah. uh, between the way they play games. We see a lot of sweepstakes in the U.S. as opposed to decline a little bit in, in, in sports books. So, yes, it varies. But again, we choose to focus on a very specific market, right? Um, we're mostly casino oriented, so there's like four states right yeah. now in the US, maybe five uh, with Maryland coming up uh, around the corner. Um, so it gives us a little bit more, I'll put it differently. When you have a greater choice, it becomes a problem. When you have a smaller choice, you know exactly where you're going to pick. Big, it. We yes. chose New Jersey for a specific reason. We think casino is good there. We think sports is good there. We think it's a good place to start. Taxation seems reasonable in terms of population, in terms of opportunity in the market, as opposed to Pennsylvania, where it's much more uh, diverse and, and open. This gives us a little bit more uh, opportunity to become to take a bigger market share. And once again, it all focuses on strategy because we could have spread around. We would have wasted a lot of money without having the ability to really show them where we where, where we can shine. So I could sit in here and listen to you talking about territories and markets and regions forever because it's absolutely fascinating. And I can only imagine how challenging that can be. But I want to touch on something else, and that is player safety, because I know this is really important to you guys. And it's really important to the industry because we want the industry to continue with a good reputation and really good player safety integration and respect so what are you guys doing to ensure player safety it's not often a popular topic to talk about but i know that it's very key for you guys oh no absolutely first of all it is important for me because it's it safeguards the industry you know this is where i this is what i do for a living i want to make sure that this it is sustainable so it's absolutely important I also had the compliance department at, uh, at soft to bed so I, I know firsthand what we do. Uh, we have training uh, to our employees understanding how responsible gambling should be implemented. Uh, we just now implemented Responsible Gambling Week, so we kind of focus on that internally. Um, um, and, and we have we developed responsible, responsible Gambling Tools. We're actually nominated in an award right now when it comes to Responsible Gambling. Um, and, and for me specifically, um, I think it's also, and I also have the commercial benefit, because once you understand uh, what are the risks internally, 
to the players, then you minimize claims, you, you have a little more, more certainty to the business. So it serves both the operator and, and the player uh, just as much. Um, it's important for us to make money, but, and we understand that it comes from players, but it's important, more important for us to make sure that they do it for fun and, and not, not kill themselves for that. I mean, I think it's, it's important for, for both of us. It's also a long-term strategy, isn't it, to, to ensure your player safety, because if you have a short-term vision, those players are going to bottom out, they're going to be lost, to, and they'll be lost forever because they just won't be able to maintain the gameplay. So what specifically, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper, but are there any specific mechanics that you have in place that you have, that you've implemented, that you're proud of, and maybe other competitors are not looking into? Well, we try to follow the, the industry, but we do have our own triggers to understand where, uh, where betting exceeds the fun and becomes a little bit more problematic. Uh, we have an amazing team that we've uh, hired that can, can identify those issues ahead of time. Uh, we offer diversity to a lot of operators so we can see those problems not only from the, from the B2C brands that we operate, but across the, across the brands that we assist with. So it gives us a better picture of understanding where those issues can, may arise. Um, we've also engaged with other third parties to provide us a little bit of their tools to identify those issues. And most, most importantly, we focus on training. We really, really, it's important for us to make sure that our employees understand the risks and when they identify them, that they treat them. Once again, for the operator, for the, for the player's sake, but not, important, not less important for the operator's sake because we minimize risk part for, for the so we started off talking about Sigma. We started off talking about your big stand here at Sigma 2023, which, as I said, is more like a villa. It's a, it's a two-deck stand with a walkthrough and amazing lights and just everything going on right there. Sigma provides this amazing opportunity because we're right at the end of the year. We get to look back at what's happened this year. So, David, for you and for the business, what have been the highlights for 2023? Well, I think 2022 was a very interesting year. We've seen a lot of changes, regulatory changes in the, in, in the landscape. Uh, but I think it also created a lot of opportunities. I think for us specifically, it was an amazing year. Uh, we've been very successful. I think, um, I think we've seen some changes that might impact the future. Um, but all in all, it was, it was an amazing year. I hope that 2024 will be as big as this one, if not better. Anything you can pinpoint for us that you say that I am so pleased that happened in 2023 that that's the epitome of the year? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a difficult question because so many good things have happened. I mean, I'm going to be uh, very subjective on what we've uh, on what we've achieved. I think that the uh, uh, I think for us getting uh, licenses in Greece and in Romania right now and the Italian license have been an amazing achievement. I just want to make sure that we can, you know, recreate the success later on and we, that we have enough states in Europe to get licenses as it needs. Fantastic. Well, listen, I'm wishing you all the very, very best Thank for you. 2024. I look forward to sitting back with you here next year and finding out about even more success for SoftyBet. Thank you so much, David. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.